My name's M. Well, it isn't really, but for reasons I'll explain later, I've had to hide my identity. For over half my life, I've been looking into conspiracy theory. I have learned that not everything we've been taught and the narrative in the mainstream, even what we were taught at school or is in the mainstream science domain, is necessarily true. Some of these conspiracy theories have over time turned out to be conspiracy facts. Many of these people, for the first time during a time of confusion, fear and hope, have been looking into the conspiracy theory world and have been taken in by something that I also discovered. There was a man who was claiming to be the rightful King of England and has even been telling us that the current crop of royals are illegitimate. This is the story about how I discovered Greg Hallett, how when I went down this metaphorical rabbit hole, I researched and found out that I had a journey that I had no idea awaited me. This is the story of a guy who is allegedly king and my journey to get to the bottom of the truth. Joseph Gregory Hallett. I don't know if any of you have become aware of the claims of this man. He makes out that he is the rightful inheritor of the title Christ and also the direct descendant of Anne Boleyn and Walter Riley, which somehow makes him the rightful king of England and the territories and countless other things. He claims the rightful ownership of basically everything, you, me, the entire world, the Catholic Church, uh, you name it. <laughs> you might find it shocking, but the truth is there for you to make your own mind up. We have a new king! I implore you to do your own research and follow your own white rabbit. This whole QAnon movement, the whole revolution was started by an expression that says, follow the white rabbit. And the letter that Greg has from Queen Victoria has got the white rabbit on. With this ascension to the throne, and the current situation with the coronavirus, is this all tied in? The madness of all of this, you know. One of my favorite expressions was, I was telling my friend, I said, listen, I'm gonna go and interview this man in England who claims he has this right to ascend the throne. And he said, you're talking science fiction. And I, it took me a second and I said to him, I said, look at your life. You've been banged up for three months, locked down, mm -hmm. can't see your loved ones. Mm -hmm. You gotta wear a mask to go out. I said, what science fiction? We're living in science fiction. The next step was to make a YouTube channel. This guy, his name uh, is M. Um, he's the seeker of truth. He's only got 226 subscribers, right? Unlike Charlie Wall. And he has actually done what I haven't had the time to do, believe it or not, which is go up to Buckingham Palace, do a film, and completely debunk what this idiot's been saying, right? That is fella, did it. In this raising of consciousness, it is going to become very hard to hide the truth. And if you want to lie, you will eventually get caught out. I guarantee you that. So think about that before you continue to keep perpetuating nonsense. Jesse Perez Casanova is quite likely a South African counterintelligence agent picked up by Mossad and introduced to Cambridge Analytica. You know, when I first saw this, I was laughing, okay? Obviously, it's not so funny now, but I was laughing when I first read this because I just couldn't believe it. Apparently, I am part of Mossad, okay? Who's, why didn't anybody tell me this? Where's my paycheck? Please, okay? It's just insane, guys. I'm a Mossad agent. 
Cambridge Analytica. I don't. Where do you get this from? Where do you make up these lies? Where do you get this from? And then he goes on to explain what exactly Cambridge Analytica is for. You know, this is the thing. They're, they're, they're taking advantage of people. And this is clear manipulation. We don't have a time for disinformation agents. We don't. We just don't. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I'm just not going to do that. You know, and we got a lot of proof. Okay. We got a lot of proof to actually show that this is all nonsense. It's just unbelievable, you know, for someone like myself who knows the truth to read this and to think to themselves, who lies on this level, dude? You lie on such an unbelievable level. It's insane. Apparently, I'm an agent. Uh, the knowledge you now have from Jesse Perez Casanova is fraudulent and a fraud. Apparently, the truth that I would shared yesterday that you can research and confirm for yourself is fraudulent. Okay. That's interesting. Just take advantage of people that are not going to do the research for themselves cool and basically therefore your request for 100 euro refund is denied oh, my goodness okay because people want their money back after i've actually shined the lights on this okay good well, i'm not going to go on to read this anymore it's just absolutely nonsense i don't have time to read this so what i am going to do instead is i'm going to go ahead and play a video from a fellow youtuber who has gone ahead and he has created videos essentially exposing Gregory Hallett. And I don't think he's doing this for fun. It really doesn't seem like this because I'd asked him if I could share this, these videos on my channel. I'd said, listen, man, can I, can I share these videos on my channel? And he's like, yeah, man, anything to share the truth. So, you know, that immediately tells me that this guy is literally, he's in, he's in the same sort of position I'm finding myself in right now where I'm essentially uh, exposing this because he is very worried about all the people out there that are being scammed by the scam artist and his name is m seek of truth i'll put his link in the description and this is awesome we need to start shining lights on these guys um and i'll tell you what all you disinformation agents out there uh and, and remember running the organization we're, we're running we have to be aware of who is potentially um you know corrupted because we can't have anything infiltrates our organization and like that and it's great because the truth always reveals itself. I get warnings from all sorts of people all the time because multiple people and multiple teams have reached out to me and I, we don't just reach back to people. In fact, people, I, I will consult people before I do that. And then all of a sudden the truth just comes out. Even if I don't consult people, even if I don't ask people, the truth just comes out, guys. This is spiritual. This is highly spiritual. God's on our side. This fella's been telling a truth. So what I'm going to do is click on it on this channel and I'm going to show you briefly. This is Greg, Greg Hallett's um, sisters, two of his sisters, right? Telling you the truth about Greg Hallett, right? There he is there. So I'm, what I'm saying to you is stop wasting everybody's time with this and this idiot. And Charlie Wall should be ashamed of himself for promoting someone who is subverting the Constitution, right? So do yourselves a favour, people. Go and subscribe to this channel, right? That is M Seeker of Truth. Let's, let me tell you something. He can't be the king, right? If you know anything about constitutional law, you know that that idiot cannot be the king. If he wants to be the president and you want him to be the president, then campaign for a republic. Not only has he got off his arse, and started to do some real investigation into the guy, going up to Buckingham Palace, which, by the way, I was going to be doing from here, but now you've already done it, save me a job, right? All of this element, right, that this guy's talking about here, he's got the two sisters there, and yet you've got this plonker with, that, with this Charlie Wald giving it large, right? Everyone out there has ever watched Charlie Wald, I'll tell you what you should do. Unsubscribe and don't, don't subscribe to me. Subscribe to the guy that has gone off his backside and done the research and shown you that that man is a complete fraud. That Greg Hallett is a complete fraud. Right? Done. So, on August the 9th, I created my YouTube channel. I released nine videos all at once. These videos included some of my earlier works that I'd submitted to my, my group, my network, uh, but also my interviews with Tom Carhill and the sisters' interviews. Also, there was 
the videos that I'd shown you previously around Francisco Manuel and Greg's Hallett's previous story, pushing someone else to be king. And of course, Greg Hallett showing his true colours, which I showed you, uh, where he is very slanderous and insulting to his sisters. So one of these YouTubers that reached out to me was a guy called Rice Crypto. And he'd been asking for uh, the sisters to do an interview with him for a while. And they kind of come forward to me and just said, you know, shall I do this interview? And, and I said, great, you know, the more people that uh, you can reach, the better. And this guy had a following. So Rice had been talking to Charlie Ward and David Mahoney for a while. And his YouTube partner, I, I suppose, who did uh, shows with him, his name was Stan Barabbas or uh, Bod Histava Love. Now, he had actually interviewed Greg Hallett. Now, Rice had some questions because of the investigation that he'd done and because of the information that he'd seen around his sisters, uh, etc., around the validity of Greg Hallett's claims and really was pushing for an interview with him. However, the guys he was talking to, his Greg's promoters, um, decided to become sour with him. Rice put out some videos calling out Greg, asking him to come on uh, and explain himself uh, or just talk to him. He really wanted that interview, but uh, to no avail. So Greg Allen, again, you want my personal information? I will gladly give it to you. Let's do that Zoom call and I will exchange it to you on the Zoom call. We'll go live. I won't edit it. So there's no excuse for you not to accept my interview request that I've been requesting for months, as you said. Yes, I have been requesting for months, and I have been very persistent, haven't I? You're calling yourself the king, and you're also using the title Christ. Don't claim to be Christ, Greg. I take high offense to that. I'm highly offended, and I am a bearer of Christ. And you are not Christ. So will you please accept my interview request, Greg? I got lots of questions for you. The biggest question is, who'd you co-write the Hidden King book with? Who is the star of the book? Who is the actual Hidden King? Are you a deep state agent? Look, I'm not a deep state agent, okay? So uh, what's Greg going to say when you know I put out this YouTube channel, which we'll talk about, and I basically ask his believers to question what they are being fed. Um, what's his response going to be? Well, you know, he only knows me as M seeker of truth. He's got nothing to attack me for. So it, thereby the default is he must be a deep state agent. Uh, there's, he said something like I work for Emma data limited. Um, I can't remember what the other name for it was called, but uh, if that was so, then they owe me some paychecks <laughs> and get into contact with me um, because I could do with that money. And that's, that's, that's the thing guys got to look at, you know, um, these people promoting uh, Greg, you know, they all seem to have a lot of money. They have a lot of followers. Um, do you really think if I was a deep state agent, if they were pushing information through me, who didn't even have a YouTube channel, they would choose some guy who's unknown in these circles to push this information out. Do you think that that's really something that a deep state would do? No, they, they would choose people with 132,000 subscribers uh, and they would push it through those channels. If they wanted to push I mean, it out. Uh, what you're saying makes complete sense, but I mean, I just wanted to clarify because neither Stan nor myself want to talk to deep state agents. And I also want to clarify <laughs> that I'm not a deep state agent because in the same sense, I, if I was, or if I was subliminally programmed into something, I would like definitely get paid for being this deep state agent that I'm that, because it's not only you that he, that he has said that about. And that's unfortunately, oh. it just seems to be Greg's go-to instead of trying to, be logical with what he's trying to disagree with instead of that he just unfortunately tends to kind of resort to insulting yeah and what's you know and it, like you just said what's important to note is anyone that has come forward on their channel to kind of question the validity uh, of some of the claims putting out anyone that's done that you know I'll name a few they are instantly and, and including tom carhill who i'll talk about later you know who was friends with greg who lived with greg you know, he's instantly a deep state agent. I'm instantly a deep state agent. And now, now you've done these videos. Now, Rice, you've joined the book of deep state agents. Anyone that wants to question what they are being fed 
I brought out my channel, um, what, just over three weeks ago, I think. And um, literally, I got a response. We won't go too much into Greg's response, um, but I will, I will touch on it in a minute. Um, but so I did interviews with a guy that Greg lived with for four, four months, and it was friends with years, Tom Carhill. Um, I also did interviews with his uh, sisters. Um, and basically, I came out of nowhere for them. I also went to Buckingham Palace. I did a Check out my channel, guys, if you've seen this video for the first time. But like, yes, I set up a YouTube channel and drop like seven videos on there. Bang, put them all out there. So then after that happened, uh, lots of their fans started saying, this is around the same time they cut the hosts off and told everyone to go into one fan group. So Greg went onto every single page about him and said, everyone, these pages aren't run by me and my crew. I want all of you to go onto the official King's Patriot group because that's where we can be overlords over you and the information that's, that's sent there, and we can get rid of anyone that questions me. So everyone went, all right then, <laughs> we trust you. We'll all go there. So they all went there, they cut off all the comments and stuff for a while, or a lot of their posts, and then I received this from David. Um, I can't do his voice, but I've been getting a lot of complaints about you and your weird messages. Secret of truth. Lol, you're spreading lies, mate. There's no one paying for any of the programs or charging anything. It's free. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll be very straight with you. But now everyone knows what you're up to. So that was David's message to me and I didn't, um, I didn't reply to him. I chose to make a public reply. Um, and in that public reply, I wrote a letter to David and Greg because Greg also reacted badly and started insulting Tom Carhill. Um, and the same things like he's a short man of five nine, and um, they used to call him piss pants Tom, and all these stupid insults that um, you know it was just to try and uh, get back, bite back, really. Um, but it just came across really badly. Um, so anyway, I wrote a letter to them, dear Mr. Mahoney and Lord Chancellor. I would like to address your recent claims. I am spreading lies. David, you say you you've got you're getting a lot of complaints. Love to read those messages. What are people saying? Are they worried that Greg's real character profile and contradicting lies are getting exposed? I'm spreading lies about fundraisers being set up for the video making. Please see below a fundraiser you set up for the creation of a documentary on Greg and also your donate page on Digital Warriors. I never said you had to pay to watch the film. You are lying by making it seem to others that I made that false claim. You say, now everyone knows what you're up to. What, you mean exposing Greg's lies in the hope that some of the people he's still managing to affect have a full picture of Greg and can hopefully protect themselves from further mental, emotional or financial abuse at the hands of this man? Good. I want people to know what I'm doing. Oh. Lord Chancellor, to call me a pathological liar is rich. Was this because I made a video showing you lying and the manipulation techniques you used? You lied before. You told many lies over the years. You're making up a new lie daily. What about the time you asked for 2,700 of people's hard-earned money for documents and then decided to spend it on something else, not as promised? I think that was on a, on a new server. And then you said you were needing another 2,700 for the aforementioned reason. Please stop selling these lies. It's hurt people. It's hurt people I know, and it's still hurting many. Yours sincerely, M. So I put out that letter to them guys straight from him sending that message, a public reply, which I'm sure he saw. And just to show you guys quickly the uh, screenshots, obviously at the, at the bottom it's got David Mahoney's uh, message to me, which you've already seen. And then here you've got the evidence um, and his fundraiser he set up. But uh, yeah, a David Mahoney is organising a fundraiser for the Hidden King interviews. 150 grand, you know. Here you have Digital Warriors, you know, BeNosy.com, Digital Warrior Productions, and their donate option. Here's just one of one of many of Greg's responses talking about me. And so this guy here, you know, he says, so what about that guy on YouTube, M Seeker of Truth? He's using your videos, talking shit over them. Copyright, maybe? So, you know, he's wanting to kind of attack my channel too. <laughs> so, so David says, but it's tricky. It can use a certain amount without being illegal. 
Anyway, people with any brains can see through that. For the record, I asked him to contact me and he didn't. Uh, actually, Dave, I put out a public letter, which I've just read to you. <laughs> Shows how much of a backbone he has. He's an unknown guy who's never done anything trying to get famous by being a deep state supporter. I do not support a deep state. Okay, um, this is just an uh, unsubstantiated claim. Just because I don't believe in Greg Hallett does not make me a deep state agent. Um, but you know, It's not like a fucking football team anyway. How do you support the deep state? Like, you've got a deep state shirt with your name on the back. Like, what the yeah. fuck you meant? You just support the deep state. <laughs> uh, it, just, it, it boggles me. And where do you think he'll end? Oh. Lol. Well, you know. So anyway, this is just... Um, pure evasion again he knows he can't stop. I mean that's super funny that you said copyright is tricky because when he was attacking me he certainly didn't have that knowledge bro <laughs> yeah. he does now he's tried and tested and it's not worked out for him and he's looked like an idiot because he's told people don't worry we're taking down MC because videos and don't worry we're taking down justice videos and then uh, they managed to get a couple of uh, successful between us copyright infringement and then we put them back up with fair use policy on them or whatnot you know it's just it is tricky because you can I mean and why shouldn't anyone be able to take claims that people are making and then talk about them and, and analyze them uh, it should be freedom of uh, expression and speech well on, on top of that actually because of course, like I, I agree. You know, I mean, if we comment, if we're analysing things and commentating on it and stuff, you know, it's it's all good. But, as long as you comment on it, yeah. so I don't mind someone takes this video and then goes and pulls this video. Apart. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, of course. I mean, even taking my original videos and mirroring them, sometimes, as long as people ask and put the link in the description and that, it's whatever. Uh, yeah. But yeah. other people have different perceptions of that. It's whatever for each different person and their video. And obviously, the law is the law, right? But this guy specifically said, and it's on one of my videos. But we encourage you to download this video, this film, share it, download it, use it on your channels. He told us to take it and use it. It's, it's not like... How are you going to be like, right, you can use it, yeah? Take it, rip this whole thing, put the whole thing on your channels, just don't criticise it and think about it and talk on it at all. Do you know what I mean? Just don't, don't, don't critically, critically yeah. analyse it. Just only support it. it in any way, because then I'm going to be angry and you're not allowed to do that. It's fucking bollocks. So then I had something very important to share, uh, which I did which was the fact that Greg Hallett was a part of a sex cult that was brought down because of paedophilia. Now, this hit them hard. Greg was in a, a commune, like a cult. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah, it was called a commune at the time. It was mm -hmm. later recognised to be a cult. Well, would you just close your eyes and let yourself relax for a few moments? The thoughts that go through don't stop them don't hold on to them just watch the thoughts going through your mind center point the regular saturday afternoon meeting a community of over 60 members operating as a trust with 70 acres of land and assets of over half a million dollars singles solo parents families predominantly middle class, often university educated. Moments of quiet as Bert Potter, the community's spiritual leader, prepares to talk. When you're ready, would you just open your eyes, please? Try and stay in that quiet, I suppose. We were asked how our community goes, how it works. My answer really is, start it and see. Find out for yourself. Don't look for theories. Don't try and work out exactly what's going to happen. Don't come up with all the nice ideas about it. Don't get into your head and theorize about all the loving feelings again that are going to be there and all the energy that you're going to create. Get in and create it. Do something about it. Feel it as it goes along. Let it become a growing process. Because the one thing that's certain is that what you do this year will be almost totally invalidated next year. 
if you're not prepared to accept the growth and the movement that happens, then don't think about communities. Get into a nice little comfortable house in the suburb somewhere, uh, put your fences up all around it, keep the gate closed, and shut yourself off. And you can probably keep things at a fairly low level. But if you move into a community, the first thing is to accept that there's going to be changes. Finding out how to get along with one another, working out methods of resolving all the conflicts and the stresses that come up. I think this is really the key to any community, is how do you resolve the stresses and problems that come up? Because they're always there. That you can't possibly have a community without them. And so really it's a way of working out these dynamic problems between people that's important. The third part of solution to interpersonal conflict is the continuing use of psychotherapy. After giving up a successful career as a businessman, his growing interest in group therapy led to the establishment of Centrepoint two and a half years ago. He could put his theories into practice. It went for quite a while. It was in Albany on the North Shore. I've been there. Tam's been there and stayed a night. Yep. I've been there and, you know, taken him there and picked him up and things like that because I was doing my nursing training in Auckland and he was at architecture school. Okay. Um, at the same time so and he had a girlfriend i don't know how he met her called kate and she was 16 yeah and lived and he was only about 19 himself 19 or 20 and um he oh probably not 18 18 19, 18, yeah, 18. 18 and um so he moved in with her at, at the because she was living with her mum at center point and he moved in with her so i'm here with rick uh hello rick good to see you it's uh, fantastic to hear from you. Um, why don't you tell people, our listeners, uh, how, how do you know Greg? Well, I met Greg at high school. That's Otamato College in Tauranga. Um, we weren't really friends at college. I think I got to know him better after high school. Um, I was quite friendly with him through from... 79 through to 85, 85 we went overseas. Um, we moved in similar circles. We occasionally went to the similar parties. I went on a skiing holiday with him for three days um, in Mount Ruapehu, which is in the center of the North Island. That was good fun. Yeah. He was, he was quite, he was very good company, very funny. Um, He's a year younger than me, um, and I visited him and his family in Norton Road, Norton Road, Cherrywood. Um, I met his mother, his father. Um, I even met his brother, Nick, who was across from Australia at that time. So I knew him, I knew him from, as I said previously, from about 78 through to 85. Okay. Um, and during this period, Greg was um, at Centrepoint. Greg was at Centrepoint from um, 80 to 81. So, so that's, that was a, like a commune that was later to, to be found out as some sort of uh, cult, am I right? Yeah. It was um, initially regarded by the media as a curiosity. Um, in the early days, it was regarded as a curiosity, sort of a commune. But commune. Then, then, as all the um, sexual allegations appeared, the perspective of centre point changed from being a commune to being a um, place of sexual abuse and sexual exploitation. Absolutely. And he told me about the fact he'd been in this kind of, what did he call it, a, um, a commune, he called it. He called yeah. it a sex commune, and he said the reason he didn't like it, and this is why he stopped eating meat, was because, and he doesn't eat meat, it's not just one of these people who says he doesn't eat meat, but does yeah. eat meat, just give people access to her. He's not one of them, he does generally not eat meat. He said what it was is when they were killing the pigs, they were like chopping them. And then they were like continuing to saw through, and then they were like twisting their head round to, you know, like twisting it round like 360 degrees to pull the head off. And he said it was all just a bit disgusting. Yeah. And it put him off, and he just put him off, disgusting. Mate. So that was the point. So he did, he did talk yeah. about this. Yeah. And talking about centre point, centre point, um, centre point yeah. commune, which was basically a sex cult. 
Um, yeah. And and that was taken down eventually uh, because the, some of the the ringleaders of the cult they were involved in child abuse. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this is the thing. Um, and he did have a friend that Richard says was had been a had been his adversary. I thought his name was Mike, but maybe it's mm -hmm. not. And I met them a few times, and they were best buddies after after they'd been in the session in this room for what is it a week or ten days? It's or fifteen. Something? There was the guy who started the cult, um, the commune, Bert Potter. Bert Potter. It was his son that Greg had issues with. Probably actually, when you look back at it now, it's just that power because he was the son of the cult leader, and Greg wanted to be up there. Right. And uh, one of the therapy sessions that the two of them were involved in is where fifteen people male and female all go into one room and they stay there for a week. There's a shower and a toilet and their meals are, um, you know, just put in through a slot in the door. Say so they're naked. And yeah, and they're all naked. And that Greg told Tam this. Yeah, and he said the, the, the idea of that whole cult, it seemed to be from what I got from it was that sex seemed to be the therapy for everything. So they basically just bonked out everything, all their problems. And so somehow Greg and um, and Otter's son got to be best buddies during these fifteen period people were in a room for a week, and then and then later on a few years later, um, this guy the guy I, I who's Bert Potter's son this guy married Greg's old girlfriend Kate. Kate. Oh, okay. Yeah. But as, as that cult, work, the cult leader was in prison for paedophilia, and I remember... So was his son, Rick said. Oh. In and, 1993. Um, Bert had, like, a, a toilet. He had his toilet, and next to his toilet, he had a little kitty toilet. Right. So, no, it was like a, it was like a grown-up's toilet, but smaller. Okay. For children. So, you know, he could sit on the toilet with children, I suppose. But anyway, part of his weirdness. Right, um, yeah, but but also, um, yeah, there was just a lot of paedophilia going on there. There, um, I can't remember. Nobody if, knew for a long time. I now. can't remember if exactly if this was a, something that I heard a guy say on during the night that I stayed there, or if it was something that I heard on a documentary about um, Centre Point Community, and he said that. He, we had to do, they, they had to do something about the children because there was a four-year-old girl went around all the men asking for somebody to sleep with her, to have sex with her, until somebody said yes. And eventually somebody said yes. And that was just like a huge, that, that was just mind-blowing that they could have that kind of effect on a baby. Yeah, you know, she's still a baby. Four yeah, four years old. old. Her, it's normal. Mm. Yeah, and that, that, that that's the devastating thing. Frightening. That is frightening. I mean, I, I, yeah, and I, I think Greg thinks that, um, well, well, Greg's hate of pedophilias, which, you know, everybody hates pedophiles. Yeah. Pedophiles. Um, yeah. And then they have a competition. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, that, that it's because he was friends with and lived with um, other paedophiles and he knew it was going on and he let it go on and he didn't speak up about it so so it's probably a guilt thing I, totally a guilt thing I reckon it's, root, it's rooted by rooted from his connection to that community that yeah and whether he was he speaks you know, out against it doing it himself who knows you know so it could I mean, be it could either it could be perhaps never, but I think whatever happened to Greg at centre point that was 80 to 81, I think that had a significant effect on him and that propelled him to um, come out as a strident opposition of pedophiles because the, um, the founder of centre point, Bert Potter, was a bit eventually convicted of um, child abuse. Um, he had about um, four or five convictions of interfering with young girls. Um, and I think, and then his son was also convicted of similar offences. And I think that put Greg on 
I don't know, I never spoke to Greg about his time at Centrepoint. Um, I think that propelled him to be a uh, vehement opposing, opponent of uh, Peter Peter. Peter. So, yeah. um, So perhaps everything that happened there, obviously he was part of this community. Um, and um, obviously this stuff come out about the leader uh, of, the, of the cult um, yeah. and also his son, um, which Greg, yes. Greg knew both, both of these guys. Um, yes, yep. yeah. Right, so yeah, that's his involvement with, with Centrepoint at the time. I, I know that Tam and Amanda, um, they, they, they touched on it in the interview that I did with them. Um, so yeah, and also they say, they say the same, you know, they have appeared in, you know, um, ever since kind of all of those abuse allegations came out, um, Greg then started to read his books. Um, apparently beforehand he wasn't like homophobic at all, but yeah. when he started writing his books, um, uh, he started to um, have some homophobic, homophobic remarks in, uh, yeah. in his books. Um, and also, um, as Tam, Tam says, that as she came out um, as a lesbian, um, he had to be very sort of homophobic towards her, but also he started to, um, yeah, just have this, uh, how did you put it, a virulent hate for people. Um, and, uh, you know, that could possibly be down to maybe a guilt factor for being associated with, with Centrepoint and all that went on there. And maybe as to try and distance himself from um, those that were involved, and, and he could have possibly known it was going on as well. Yeah, yeah, be a real guilt there, um, uh, and, and that may be why he um, has. You know, I mean, everyone, you know, every, everyone disliked pedophiles, but he um, is obviously outspoken about it, and he was involved in a in a sex cult um, where child abuse happened. Um, so it could very much be a guilt thing. Um, I don't, I don't want to make accusations, you know, it could, no. oh, we don't know. Um, we don't know that for sure, only the people that were there know. Um, yeah. And that might be another factor into, you know, into why um, why he sort of said, says about this. But he, he never mentions that he was in centre point, but it, this is a fact. Yeah, yeah, I've got uh, video footage of him. So um, while he was at centre point, um, I understand that he had a school age girlfriend um so that might be another factor as well like it's funny because um i sort of knew him through as i said 80s 87 through to um mid 80, 85 was my peak interaction with him um and during that time he never actually mentioned center point uh, he was very good at compartmentalizing his um anything that he said. I think he knew that I wouldn't believe it or uh, wouldn't be interested in it. So he was very good at able to compartmentalise what he said. Sure. He was never um, obviously anti-gay or anything before he went there. I don't remember there being anything. He wasn't anti-gay really until I came out. When I came out as a lesbian, then he got very anti-gay. But he's probably anti-gay from the from the that time. Mm. From so the all, all, all of this stuff probably comes from there. He doesn't probably want to be associated with what happened there. Um, and either that, either it's a guilt thing for being associated with a cult that um, that had all this going on, or you know, or he may have been involved. We don't know. I'm not going to say that he was, but and maybe he's ashamed, or maybe just doesn't want people yeah. to know the best way do that is to be a, a figurehead in mm. these paedophile rings and um, and obviously in some of his books he says a lot of um, homophobic uh, uh, mark, remarks in his books actually mm. people that told that read them I haven't read them myself or told me that so um, and like you say he didn't seem to be um, homophobic or um, have any kind of real uh, outspoken gripe against paedophilia before um, that cult was investigated. And, um, mm. So that's just my observation. But yeah, it probably is rooted from that. I spoke to some other people uh, about his involvement in Centrepoint. Um, 
but a uh, really that carnival came crashing down. Yeah, the early, uh, the mid 90s were the convictions of Bert Potter. They brought, they brought convictions against the leader, Bert, Bert Potter, is it? Yep. In the mid 90s. And the, and everybody just thought, you know, at first they thought I was cool, you know, the commune was cool because it was in you know, the 70s and it was, you know, sexual experiences and free love and all the rest of it. And everybody was like, oh, yeah, it's cool. We've got, and we've got one just down the road, sort of thing. But nobody mm. knew what was really going on there. Mm. Oh. And when you went there to move in there, you had to give all your worldly donations, right, all your possessions. Everything. You had to give all, all, your, over all your possessions and um, it was just communal, communal wardrobe. Everybody would just first up best dress, basically. Mm. And um, when you left, you left with nothing. Right. So people sold their houses and everything. Wow, yeah. I mean, yeah. it sounds like... Um, you know, Gray has his own cult now, and people are also trying. <laughs> he's trying. Well, he's, yeah, but it's working. You know, he's very he's got a lot of followers. <laughs> he's just ridiculous. Straight after revealing this video about Center Point, um, Charlie Freak, who has a massive following, had shared a tweet from a guy called John Galt. And this guy is massive in the Q movement. I mean, some people think he is JFK Jr. Um, and he had said, you know, why why follow this guy, Greg Hallett? You know, he is not the king and no one, we don't need a king, you know. Um, and I've always thought that. We, why do we need a king? We are our, our own sovereign and that was exactly what he said. And now this, because of their vast followings between the two of them, Charlie Freak and John Galt, this really was a turning point. <laughs> well, he's, he's a bit like Greg's bodyguard now. And I get the sense that um, after Greg's outbursts from, obviously, when my initial videos came out um, after interviewing Tom Carhill, which he really didn't like, and then Charlie Freak came out and said about this John Galt uh, Q a uh, big guy in the whole Q movement saying, you know, who cares who Greg Hallett is and then Charlie Freak kind of coming out saying he doesn't back him basically. Uh, it kind of all that week uh, went up in the air. You could see Dave was stressed. He put out two videos, one waving his passport around, which we'll talk about later, and one kind of just talking about trolls. It's the 21st of August and the last few days have been a, a bit hard on um, our group because there's been a lot of rumors about division. So my message is, you will never break us. All you trolls out there that think you can send messages and videos and do all your little links and steal all the material, you're never gonna break what we have. And this is what we have. The legend Lee Dawson, Charlie Ward, and Jack Kidd. Hey! What are we? We're powerful together. So all you trolls out there, you keep trying, it ain't gonna work. Bring it on. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. Cheers. God bless Donald Trump. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. So, you know, they were saying that deep state trolls were attacking them. They closed off all the comments from all of their fan pages and platforms. Um, you know, they just like literally shut things down. And I, and I get the feeling they kind of said to Greg after a few outbursts, after insulting a lot of people and seeming like a uh, whiny, you know, lost his temper basically and just couldn't help but just throw insults after insults and slander after slander at people and accuse them all of being deep state agents and just make himself like a crap really. Uh, I think that maybe the people behind him like David have said, you know what, let, let, let me talk about these. You don't need to address these attacks. He doesn't have one of those. He doesn't have a British passport and this is what it's all about. Charlie Freak, as far as I can tell, lives in Mexico, so he doesn't even live in the US. He's not a British citizen. He has nothing to do with the Commonwealth or the 14 territories that go with it. So, who are you gonna take your advice from? People that don't know Greg, who've never met him, who haven't spent the same amount of time with him, who are not British passport holders, have probably never been to the UK, and probably don't know anything about the 54 Commonwealth countries and the 14 territories and the millions of citizens that rely and depend on the United Kingdom to protect them. 
with their military power, with their financial backing. Because if the British government, the crown falls, which it will, who is going to lead the country and understands the country and the needs of all the Commonwealth people? who they can rely on and know that they're going to be safe to be able to sleep in their beds at night and not be living in fear of being invaded. Nice fear-mongering and deflection techniques there, David. But I'd like to point out something. I have got one of these. And also, Justice has got one of these. Guys, ask yourself who is telling you that you should listen to them. Look into these people. I'm about to give you some help with that. It was after these revelations that um, I then did a video with Justice and this turned out to be the first episode of Just Truth and this then became a regular thing between myself and Justice is making videos exposing con men, exposing lies, uh, looking into conspiracy theory or conspiracy con um, and, and that's where it was born. Now recently David you've been saying on one of your fan pages that I have no backbone as I didn't respond to your private message. Well, as you'll see later on in this video, I did put out on that same day you sent me the message, a public response to you for you to answer to, which you did not. So you want a bit of more of a clearer response? Okay, well, here we go. Okay, guys, I am here with Justice. Uh, how you doing, Justice? Um, Charlie Freak, well, Charlie Freak had put out a... Um, put out a post uh, with a tweet from John Galt, who is um, someone big in the Q movement. Um, some people are even saying he's JFK Jr. Um, but anyway, this guy had said, you know, at the end of the day, who cares who Greg Allen is? Who cares? Like, do, at the end of the day, do you guys want to carry on being ruled by some guy? And Charlie Freak had kind of supported that as well. And he's got a big following. I don't know how many, but, you know, he's got large following a lot of people take stock in what he says as well so that was a major blow for them and um david mahoney looked like he had a few wines you know he was slow he got he got onto a video in his car and just had this whole spiel about charlie freak doesn't even live in the uk he doesn't even live in the us he lives in mexico and he starts waving his passport around he hasn't got one of these um, I've been spending all my day dealing with these issues that have come from a, a video that was released yesterday and a couple of twi tweets, Twitter statements. So I wanted to address that and make things very clear for people about what your choices are and where you take your information from. So I'm going to just talk about some facts. And I think it's important to talk about facts because the facts are the, the, the doorway of truth. That's what they are, okay? So, Charlie Freak, I subscribe to his channel, I like his work, I think he does some brilliant videos, he's got some great intel, but you know what he doesn't have, and this is where it gets really interesting and important, he doesn't have one of those, he doesn't have a British passport, and this is what it's all about, Charlie Freak, as far as I can tell, lives in Mexico, so he doesn't even live in the US, he's not a British citizen, he has nothing to do with the Commonwealth or the 14 territories that go with it. So what we're fighting for now is our freedom and our, yes, our right to be sovereign. But people saying things like, you can be a sovereign, everybody's a sovereign. You know, you're not English. You don't understand because you don't have that, a British passport. So that's why I'm passionate about what I do, okay? So making statements, telling us what to do. If you want to take your advice from a man that lives the other side of the world, I don't even know if he's ever been to the UK. It's probably doubtful. Not a lot of people have, especially Americans, they don't own a passport. He does because he lives in Mexico. So, Charlie, if you watch this, utter respect, man. I love your work, but I think it was reckless to start saying to dictate what the English people want to do with their lives and their choices. So, if you don't like the content of what we're doing, leave. I have absolutely no problem with you leaving. Go live your life, worship whatever God you want, subscribe to whatever channels you want, watch whatever TV stations you want. But please, don't say and send emails to me and messages to me trying to force me into, you know, making decisions about why, what do I think of this and that. It doesn't work that way. Follow your own intuition, your own instinct, and you'll find the answers. And that's it. 
again, let me leave you with that last one thing just to think about. If you have one of these, you need to listen to what we're saying and not what some American living in Mexico is saying. Okay? Peace out, as they say. Have a good week. And then he kind of says, who are you going to listen to? That guy over in Mexico? Or are you going to listen to someone with one of these? You know, because this is a time where you should be listening to people where it matters to. You know, passports. <laughs> passports. But if you're going to that route, me and you are quite clearly British. Uh, we're quite clearly, you know, English. Um, you know, we have a uh, very big interest in if someone's going to rule over our country, right? You know, um, we've been putting out these videos for a while just because we've not got the biggest platform as Charlie Freak uh, and things, and, and, and David Mahoney and these guys actually even. Um, doesn't mean that what we're saying uh, you shouldn't take stock in or you shouldn't listen to or you shouldn't, you know, it, and it's all about whoever's got the bigger channel. They think it's all about whoever's got the bigger channel is the people you should listen to. And it's not, you know, the, 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 the most popular horse doesn't always win the race. And sometimes you've got to back the kind of uh, dark horses with, uh, that have got the better information on the, better, on the day. And it's like... Yeah, the whole thing with the consensus and that and these guys that have big platforms and stuff, um, it's all well and good if they can back it up. But mo in fact, actually, to be honest, most of the people that I know that have had big platforms don't have platforms at all anymore. And if they do, then they have to keep making new ones and they might have an all right following, but it's not very big for very long because they get shut down real quick. People don't get to speak truths in these realms really very freely which is why i don't touch a lot of a lot of subjects and i speak about things in a way that will make people come to me and be like oh well what's your solution then because charlie ward you know seems to be offering them or the rest of these guys with the king the whole story you know they're offering what seems to be a simple concise solution this dude is going to be king there's going to be a financial reset he's probably got a load of gold stashed away and is just going to give it to all of you supporters. And luckily for you, you know about it first. So it's all going to be good. Me, on the other hand, I'm just sat in my bedroom or in the front room chatting shit into my mobile. And they're like, yeah, well, you ain't got a solution, bro. So get out of here. These guys are actually telling me that everything's going to be okay and that we're all going to be fine in a few months and that all this COVID stuff and all the lockdown is actually done so that all these pedophiles and stuff will get locked up and all get fucking their heads chopped off and shit. So you just wait for it to be on TV and in the meantime, shut up. And then you get into it and break it down with most of these people, yeah. And it's always the same thing. We'll just wait and see. We'll just wait and see. Yeah. And I keep saying it's it. Very I'm good saying, point. It's, it's pointless doing any sort of research or knowing anything about anything if you're just going to wait and see. You might as well just carry on watching BBC 24-7 or whatever it is you was doing before yeah. you woke up. That's it. I mean, um, that is the, the general start. <coughs> Very good point you make. Because um, uh, it's like these people, like you say, because they've been offered a solution, they're going to back these people and not the people that say, guys, these people are lying to you with this solution. No, they've got a solution. What, you, you know, you've not said, us, said anything that makes us think that I should back you instead because you're not going to put someone on the phone that's going to save us. They are, or they're telling us that they are. Um, and that's just wrong, man. This is just... Just think about it, you know, think about it properly and don't just put any old Joe on the, on the, because that's the other thing that annoys me as well is, oh, well, it'd be better than the old, you know, the old mon uh, monarchy, you know, they've done a horrible thing. This guy seems better. You can't just guess that someone's going to be better and put them on a the throne because you don't like who, who is on the throne. I hope they're going to be better or have the, the sense. I mean, the amount of people that have come to me have been like, Charlie Ward, such a lovely grandfatherly type figure and the same thing with Greg the amount of like yeah. old birds and that they're like Greg's such a lovely handsome fellow he'd be a wonderful king he'd be such a great king you know all the actual reptilian pedo bastards we got in power now they're horrible Greg would be wicked in charge you know he'd all chuck us gold and we'd all be fucking just getting showered in golden flakes and stuff all the time and not having to work at all and it's like you lot are fucked. You don't think this guy's going to have you in chains, like, randomly licking his feet clean and shit and, like, weird yeah. stuff like that. Like, this guy is twisted. The rest of them yeah. are twisted. Like, the whole story is mad. It's, again, everything's intertwined and it all goes back to personal responsibility and the only real saviour we have is, is within ourselves. you know. Governance comes from within. There is one innate morality and if you're an adult that doesn't know how to behave themselves or conduct themselves properly, then that's something that we as a society will have to deal with. But um, 
in terms of having someone rule over you. I mean, not, a, a lot of people as well are saying, oh, he doesn't want to rule over you like that. He doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to do that. The guy is claiming to be the king of the fucking world. Right, I'm not just talking about. Uh, it's yeah. not just talking about claiming the throne and stealing off the monarchy because they haven't replied to his letters. Like I didn't know about common law before he started chatting shit. Right, it's not just that. He's the king of Israel. He's king of kings, lord of lords, elect of. He is the most high Christ incarnate, as man come again in his kingly character. He is claiming the whole lot. The whole the lot. So people that yeah. are telling me that he doesn't want to rule. I'm not saying he, he he wants to enslave everybody, but he most certainly wants to take the position of authority. Certainly wants the power. Over, over the all, you know, in the new world system. And whether he, again, I don't know what his motive is. I don't know if he's suffering from some serious, serious schizophrenia type, narcissistic, psychotic, sociopathic disorder. Um, I'm not a mental health doctor type person like that. Maybe Dr. Charles Ward could help him. I don't know. Probably his fake PhD. I'm making it way worse. But my point is, I don't know if this guy is real ill, but I know that David isn't in that way, and I know that Charlie isn't in that way. And I think Jack Kidd, obviously being a victim of fraud before, I won't comment on him. He might just be another victim of fraud. But yeah. these other guys that are supporting him in his claims without really challenging him, if he really, really believes that he's about to take, do you know what I mean? Like we we're making these videos and that, bro. But in a serious note, if this stuff doesn't go to plan, which is clearly not he could be losing his shit somewhere, like really tripping, like thinking that all this stuff was real and all these people, these hundreds of thousands of people that were back him on Charlie Wall's channel. I don't know what his mental state's like. I'm not his friend. So my care for it is minimal because he's caused a lot of people damage. But the people that are supporting him and are backing him, such as David and Charlie, really need to go and just check on him and make sure he's all right, really. Because yeah. it's, it's, if I don't know how invested he is in it. I don't know what his aims are. I don't know if he's trying to trick us, whether it's another full distraction or whether he really believes in it. Because if he does really, really believe in it, it's not going to end well. Either. It's not going to end well anyway. But it's, I, I feel bad. I, I agree. And um, as I said before in other videos, I'm a mental health advocate. And obviously, my main concern is for the, all the thousands of people that are having their mental health affected by a deception. However, that doesn't mean, you know, I've heard people kind of that also believe it's a deception the scam say oh well you know off with his head and i want to see that harm come to him i don't want to see harm come to him i don't hate this man i just do not like this information and i do not like people being fooled okay and people being scammed right but that doesn't mean i want something bad to happen to this man um you know i feel that yeah he could be mentally disturbed he could have a real mental health issues and if that's the case then what needs to happen um, is he needs to find the right help. So he needs to be sectioned under the Mental Health Act and locked up in a, um, in, in a mental health facility. On the next Allegedly King, we look at Hidden King Part 4, where they go to Portugal to dig up something that Greg had left for them in a cave. And also a rewriting of the Bible that they tell in the Hidden King Part 4. Then we will look at uh, Charlie Ward... Uh, admitting that there was something wrong about this whole story. This was a major turning point in this whole narrative. Uh, lots of people then started to wise up to this whole thing. And then we will also look at David Mahoney's response to that and trying to save the story of this allegedly king. <laughs>